taken amongst their local networks. So we've come together tonight following on from the council's cabinet meeting that was held in November last year. And I want us to have the opportunity now to begin a con conversation about the future provision of leisure, health and wellbeing and the library service in the Frodsham and Helsby area. And that conversation is between yourselves, the communities of Frodsham and Helsby, current and new pro potential providers, organisations, Brio and the council, because I see this as a fantastic opportunity for us all to work together for the future of the area. Just before we start, though, just to go through, as you have to do with these uh, meetings, is a little bit um, of the housekeeping. So um, to make sure that the quality of the meeting is OK, um, we are um, muting people, but if Leave, leave your um, cameras on because it's great to see so many faces, but if the reception starts to get a bit wobbly and I have a problem sometimes over here in Neston, so if it does go a bit wobbly, um, put turn off your um, cameras as well. Um, please use the chat bar for us um, questions, comments, suggestions, anything you want to do. We'll try and answer them as we go along, but otherwise we will um, make sure there's a full written response to those. Um, the other thing um, that you do need to know, we are recording this so that we can post it um, when we um, have all the answers to the questions and queries so that you can share it with your contacts and friends and colleagues so that everyone can see the discussion about what, what's ap actually happening. And I've been told um, as well to, to say that um, the contents of the chat bar are subject to freedom of information requests. So um, please uh, what, watch your language and um, don't put your shopping list in there. Um, so um, I think without further ado, I think we, we'll get on with the, with the meeting. Um, so, as you will all know that are here today, um, Frodsham is a very vibrant market town and combined with Helsby, it has a vigorous and caring community. So, a really strong community in the area that is exemplified by its large number of local clubs, groups and active residents. And there's so many fantastic facilities and opportunities in the area. And I know that these are extremely valued by local people. And tonight we're going to be asking some of um, the people who provide the provision to actually give an overview of the work that they're doing. For us as a council, leisure is really, really important um, and quite rightly, lots of you are passionate about it. And it was good to hear from many of you through the recent engagement exercise that we undertook last year about shaping services going forward. And so our aim tonight is to harness that passion to help shape the next steps for this area. So we're very much at the start of a journey. This isn't just one, comp one session, this is start of a journey. And it's important that you come with us on that journey and play your part and have an equal role as I'm keen that we all work together. So the format of this evening has been shaped to enable us to outline the difficult decisions that we're facing, particularly around the Frodsham Leisure Centre, to showcase the amazing and ambitious plans of some of the groups that are operating on the A55-56 corridor, and to outline the next steps for us to move forward from, from tonight. So following this evening, we'd like to establish a working group for us to work together and to help shape options for the area. And if you'd like to get involved, details of how you can do this will be shared at the end of the session. To give an indication of the time scale, so you all understand how much time we've got. Once you've registered your interest in being involved, we'll be in touch over the coming weeks to get a project group mobilised with a view to developing draft options by the end of July and for this to be considered by the Council's Cabinet in September 2021. So um, once the uh, project group has been mo mobilised, we'll have a good few months to start drawing those ideas and suggestions together uh, for how we can take this forward. 
Um, so tonight, as well as hearing from those um, three front fantastic project or, or, and organisations. I'm really pleased that we've got Ian Ashworth, who is our Council's Director of Public Health. As you can imagine, uh, Ian is extremely busy at the moment, and it's really weird being in a meeting with him where he's not showing some graphs about COVID. Um, but he's here tonight to talk about why he's involved in leading the work um, around Brio. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to Ian to give us an update. Thank you and uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for putting some time aside for joining us for tonight. And actually, it's quite enjoyable not having to speak about uh, COVID too much, although it does come into play. So uh, good evening. Um, as you'll be aware, Brio is one of the council-owned companies and it came to my area domain last year. Uh, the council decided to... Um, I think it's a really positive step forward in looking at uh, leisure, more of a health and well-being offer. And already I've been speaking to my opposite numbers in other parts of England who are, who are simply on similar journeys and looking at that transformation. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for us there. Uh, there's lots of examples of good work we can do locally, and we'll hear some of that a little bit later on. Um, but there's many challenges in place um, for leisure operators, especially non more so now during the pandemic. Um, so thinking about last summer when we were lifting the lockdown, I, when I went out to look into Fodsham Leisure Centre and see how we could open that up and what we could do, I think it's fair to say a lot of you will be dissatisfied with the current uh, building. I think there's um, a big massive thank you to people for continuing to use it. I think that's brilliant. Um, but we wanted to try and open, open things up in a COVID secure way so it's safe for everybody to use and do that, open up the library as well. So we were able to make some changes and put things into the uh, sports hall. But also it's fantastic. And another good example of us working closely with health is that vaccination center that you have right on your doorstep as well. So I think that's a really good sign of things to come um, and opportunities for us to link in with more of the communities and more within health as we move forward. So that's some of the things I hope with it. There are some financial challenges that we're, we're well documented and the things that we face and coming out of that. So we need to be innovative. And part of that is being discussion with you tonight, hearing different ideas, conversations and going on that journey, really. Um, we can't guarantee anything right now, but our team have already been busy working with Sport England. Uh, they've launched their new 10-year plan recently and they've been working with us on their strategic uh, processes. So I think that's really good for us to explore. explore. And um, tonight's that part of the journey, as Louise referenced, about getting some conversations going, hearing about opportunities and, and moving forward later on in the year with some options as well so um just thank you very much for joining us um and um nice to virtually meet you all if i pass back over to louise thanks very much ian so hopefully that gives a bit of a feel for the approach and how important it is that we link this with pu public health um, and I think it's great that, you know, we have dis started discussions with Sport England. They like our approach um, and that other councils around the country are also thinking about um, how leisure could be linked to uh, the well-being of our communities. So this is why we're here. This is our first um, meeting. And as I keep saying, and I'll keep repeating it, it is the start of a, a journey and the start of lots of positive conversations, um, I think. So don't forget to use the chat box um, if you've got any, as you're hearing things, if you've got any ideas or uh, comments that you want to make, please use that chat box. Um, so, um, what I thought we'd do now is introduce some of the um, organisations who have got some really ambitious plans and have already started some of those plans um, for the for the area. Um, we've got three of those. And the first person I'd like to introduce, which is an old council uh, colleague, councillor colleague um, from pre-2019. I didn't, didn't mean old, Alan, I mean a, a, a Someone from the past, should I say? Uh, and I love your background there. Is that is that your latest um, challenge that you've completed? So I'll, I'll, I'll bring Alan in now. Alan's from Helsby Sport and Social Club, and there's been some amazing work going on there. So, uh, Alan, I'll I'll put it over to you now. Yeah, let's let's get the publicity in first. 
Yeah, that's the background. And that thing you can see there, if you click on it with your camera, you can actually donate money. So don't worry. All right. So um, where are you? Is that bit, where are you going? Going to Everest Base Camp. Fantastic. On the, um, on the 30th of October. It's been pushed back from the 13th of March because of uh, COVID, obviously. Uh, but uh, we're off up to the mountain uh, in October. Um, we're hoping to raise, uh, well, we already started raising, but we're hoping to raise money for Clare House, the children's oh, hospice down in the Whittle. Yeah, just up yeah. the road from me. It's on my bucket list, Alan, so I'm not going in October with you, but I will go one day. So <laughs> Don't leave it too long. Don't leave no, it too I long. won't do. <clears throat> yeah, Hellsby Community Sports Club isn't me. It, uh, it's Hellsby. And it's the people of Helsby, and I think it's been a a project for since 2003. Um, people like Terry O'Neill, George Randalls, and other people within the, the old club, the BICC club, as people will remember it, has been kept going uh, primarily by volunteers. And uh, what's happened here, and as I said, it really isn't just me, it's a lot of people uh, have managed to secure a new sports club um, was, uh, put over in December, the end of December. It's only held up now because of COVID and um, it's been done by the community. People like the parish council because they got a precept from um, the residents of 100,000. The old um, Vale Royal where we got 165,000 through the uh, rural grants. It's people putting all their efforts in um, to actually make something happen, which can happen. And uh, we've got we've got a good output now. All as I would say, and, and you, nobody will want to hear this, but the reason we've managed it is because we've kept the cost down. And that's the key to all these things. Um, I'm sorry to Ian with Brio and stuff, but, you know, we've managed to hold things right and uh, produce what we needed to produce. And all I would ask people, whatever we do, is to think along the bigger picture that um, it can all be done with people working together, maybe just one manager over these things and keeping costs down so the community can organise and uh, afford them, which is more important. OK. okay. Are you done, Alan? That's brilliant. Yep. Right. It looks fantastic, actually. Um, I ha I haven't seen it completed, but it looks really nice. Um, thanks, Alan. So our next special guest is Joe Bell from Frodsham Juniors Football Club. Um, Joe, if I could bring you in. Um, this is a project that I've worked quite closely with personally, um, and it's great to see it. It moving forward. So, um, Joe, do you, are you do you want to come in? Have we got? It's Joe there. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, he can do. Okay. Yeah, I thought um, before just outlining, I'll just be quick. Before showing what we we're working with with Helsby High School on the the, the new facility, just a little bit about the club because it it tends to be a bit of a sleeping giant, the football club. Uh, and there's just some facts that I've put up there. You know, we've got over 500 players who um, are registered with the club to play. And that's everyone, kids aged from six years old to veterans teams. We've also got the largest ladies section in the Northwest. So we've got over 100 females playing for us. Um, and subsequently, we're an FA Chartered Standard Community Club. What that means is we're in the top 1% of the country for grassroots football in terms of our organisation and our growth. Um, we've got some of the lowest fees as well in the northwest. We only charge £150 a year compared to some, uh, some clubs that triple that. So I think to Alan's point, we always try to keep our costs low and we're a registered charity now with an enlarged exec executive committee and quite a diverse committee in that as well. Uh, OK, next next one. Um, so we've um, we've been partnering with Hells Behind now for since 2015 where we started to do our Frodsham festivals every summertime and we got into conversations about wanting an improved facilities partnership. We were using Saltworks which was, uh, was, was an, is an ideal for small children because it's an unsecured site and there are various issues there. 
So we moved in 2017 to use the Helsby High School site um, for our Saturday and Sunday games for all of our age groups uh, and also summer training. And we found that we had a lot of commonality in terms of we, we both want to improve facilities. Most of the players who come to the club either live in Frodsham, Helsby or the surrounding area. Um, it's about attraction and growth uh, for the club. We want to grow the club but we also want to improve facilities at the school. So it's around civic pride. And the reason why Hellsby High was the ideal choice is because they have such a large area for the grass pitches. It allows us to play, uh, have all of our children there in a secured site at one point with lots of parking. It's very accessible and also it's a great benefit to the school. So we applied for the Football Foundation and got a grant from them and through various channels managed to secure funding for a changing pavilion and a 3G AGP. Uh, so next slide, please. And um, this is the latest drawings of it. So as you can see there, it's um, similar to the one at um, uh, the Healthy Sports Club, uh, but it's a Football Foundation one. So uh, there are various other conditions tied to it, such as growth of the game, et cetera, et cetera. And we've also got a changing pavilion as well, which has been included as part of the application. So next slide shows you the um, kind of the insights about what it's going to look like. This will be available to the community as well, but predominantly it's going to be able to house the school being able to use it during term time with uninterrupted access. So there'll be no community use during school hours. So it, it'll be a school facility. And then outside of that, the club will look to grow in partnership with other providers um, and uh, try to try to increase because we do have waiting lists. Um, of kids wanting to play. So it's just kind of the coaching structure and the facilities there as well. And the final slide. So in terms of where we're up to, uh, we're nearly there uh, and we anticipate that the bill will begin sometime in March. Uh, the changing pavilion is built and it's stored off site. But, but in terms of the broader picture, the club's going to uh, continue to have a need for additional capacity as we grow, which might mean indoor space and additional pitch needs because the site's big, but it's not going to be big enough for the way that we're growing. We've gone from five or six teams to 35 plus teams now um and the club's getting more and more popular so so yeah so that's that's it that's it for me that's great thanks for, thanks very much joe um and i know it's you know we, we it has taken its time to get going but we're you know we're finally getting there and it's it's going to be a brilliant facility a really you know it's fantastic looking at those pictures and i can't wait for it to be finished for you all um, OK, so next we've got, um, I think we've got two people. We've got George Perrin, I think, from um, Runcorn Rowing Club. And I know um, Sue's on the line as well. Um, and George, am I handing over to you for this bit? You are, Louise. Um, Thank and you. Good evening. Good evening to yourself, Louise, to Ian and to everyone else. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm the captain of uh, Runcorn Rowing Club and I'm supported by Sue Slivich, uh, who is the director for this uh, project. We've been around, uh, believe it or not, since 1894. And as you can see from that photograph, our facilities uh, require substantial upgrade uh, to meet modern uh, requirements. So our gym, uh, our changing facilities, and those two boat houses will need to be renewed. What you're seeing on the left-hand side there is a temporary um, clubhouse. Um, we're, we're very excited to be part of this group, and very encouraged uh, by what's been happening locally and by what's been happening in the rowing club. The club actually sits in Holston, but of course it sits right on the boundary uh, of uh, Cheshire West and Holton Borough Council. It's on probably the longest leisure facility uh, that's available in Cheshire. Maybe uh, if you count River Dee, not quite as long as that. But nevertheless, uh, we're on the River Weaver and uh, the club, after considerable consultation, decided that it would like very much to be part of a, a thriving community project to serve uh, not only Hellsby and Prochen, but also, of course, our hinterland of, of Runcorn, which gives us a very diverse uh, catchment. And we decided that uh, we want to create a, a community facility which just enhances and encourages uh, the opportunities for people to come down to enjoy what we believe is one of the most beautiful, uh, beautiful settings in, in the county and a beautiful river going all the way up. Uh, to the lock uh, and as a result we've decided that uh, we're going to we call it go large we're going to create uh, an 11,000 foot um, boathouse gym and changing facilities 
Now that's the gold medal, I think, of uh, water sports facilities. But it's something that we need to aim for, given that uh, we cater uh, not only, as I say, for Hellsby and Prochen, but also for Roncon. We have para athletes, we have uh, recreational rowers, we have high performing um, uh, senior athletes, we have uh, veterans and seniors, uh, male and female. Um, we have a very broad catchment. We also provide facilities for Liverpool University Boat Club uh, and um, Roncorn Canoe Club. Uh, and also, latterly, the Sea Scouts. So, as I say, we've decided to uh, go large, and we've just now submitted a planning application with this 11,000-foot uh, facility. Now, that's going to be two million, and it sounds almost too much to, to hope for. And I think it will be a gold medal. But I've been so encouraged, and this is in large part down to the massive enthusiasm of Sue and uh, the way she's corralled the membership into being enthused by uh, this project. But for instance, we raised £15,000, I think, in the last two and a half, three months uh, while we've been locked down to pay for this uh, planning application. So I'm just so encouraged. So basically, we're um, very excited to be part of this uh, project and this community debate. Uh, we're absolutely um, <coughs> determined to uh, encourage uh, people to come down to enjoy the facility we've got down here. So we're encouraged, uh, we're excited, and we're determined to get people to enjoy what we have to offer. And in any way that we can help and contribute, we'd be delighted. Th thanks very much for that, George. Oh, that's nice. Um, that's great. And, you know, uh, rowing can really change lives, and it would be great to see. And one of our challenges is how do we get more people participating um, in activities, um, because all of us that do know what a profound difference it makes to our lives in terms of our mental and our physical well-being. So I'm going to put the, pan the three presenters on the, the spot a bit now, and I'm going to ask um, how, what ideas have you got about how we can encourage more people to participate um, in activities? So I'm going to start off with Alan um, because Alan Alan's uh, came in first. So Alan, how do you think? What ideas have you got, and how or how do you encourage more people to participate in in activities? I think the first thing is the world has changed. Um, when people used to play football and all, do all these things, they used to play the game and then go home and get changed. Those days have gone. We have to produce facilities which are second to none for young people or whoever it is to be able to uh, have what they want. Now, that seems very uh, easy to say, but really at the end of the day, we provide the facilities and Hellsby is a good example. Um, it was all the sports coming together to produce something which they all needed. So tennis, rugby, football, running, fishing, all the sports you can think of came together and said, look, we want better facilities. The better facilities have already, even without the sports club being opened, have been, we've been so inundated with people who wish to take part in the sport. It's proved that get the facilities right and everything else will follow. Now, in the case of, again, I'll, I'll go back to the sports, the changing rooms at the new sports club, there are referee changing rooms, there are rugby changing rooms, there are football changing rooms, there are changing rooms for young people, ladies, whatever. Again, it's the facilities that we need to put on. I know they're expensive, but if you like, we managed to do something in Hellsby, all of us, where we produce something for 4.4 million, and it's on the bottom line of Cheshire, Western Chester. It hasn't cost anybody, and nobody else contributed other than the people of Hellsby and, and the sport. So to answer the question very briefly, provide the facilities and people will take part. The rowing club, I think, is a fantastic example. <clears throat> I've used that area there for water skiing. Brilliant. If you know that these facilities are there, you'll use them. But if the changing facilities are there, you'll use them even more. That's a, that's a really good point, that, Alan. And I know when... Um, we were developing the new um, Brio facilities um, that changing 
um, for the changing rooms are really important to get those right. So just remind us what you've got at, at the Halsby Sports Club. What facilities have you got there? Facilities now, if we take the tennis first, we've extended the tennis with uh, from three courts to four courts, and they're already looking after two courts in Frodsham, uh, all being done electronically controlled. We've got the 3G football pitch, which is uh, we've been swamped with people who want to use that. And remember, it is for the community, not just Hellsby, it's for the community at large to be able to use it. We've got two great rugby pitches. We've now got uh, two all weather bowling greens and had COVID not been in, they would have been working all winter and bringing revenue back in uh, because people want to bowl in the winter. Um, we also, as I said, the running club is there and uh, we have a snooker team in there as well. But the key to it all as well, I think, is that the parents can come down with young people and spend time having a coffee while the young people are taking care of what they want to take care of, the sport. Because that's all young people and adults, don't hit stop there, they want to take part in sport. That's that's great, Alan. Thank, thanks very much um, for that. Um, Joe, do you want to um, tell us about your your sort of experience? Because you've got so many um, young people in particular playing football. Um, how do how do we encourage um, people who haven't participated in sport in football in particular to get involved? There's a couple of things we do as a club. I think Alan's right. Obviously, the better the facility, the more attractive it is. But facilities attract costs and costs need to be covered. So we're really loath to put in our costs up. So, so if you look at other clubs who have facilities that we're looking at, their, their, their membership costs are triple hours. And that just instantly prices lots of people out to the ability to play football. And we really don't want to do that. So we've had to build a sustainable model of facilities but quite right because the facilities we're going to have are going to be good it does encourage the social element as well now according to the fa grassroots football is in crisis at the moment especially in between the ages of 12 and 16 you get about 75 percent of kids dropping out of doing sports so there's another bonus for putting it at the school in that it's going to be on their doorstep so on our exec committee we also have a school's liaison officer so we invite the reception kids, the year one kiddies to come along at that age to experience football, the, the environment, the social element, the fun, that it's not competitive, it's about friendships and physical activity, it's not about winning. So we've got a very inclusive philosophy, which has boosted our numbers hugely. So it's about friendships, parental friendships, with reduction of isolation, by getting to schools, doing free taster sessions with the teachers, we've done that. We give giveaways to schools as well. We run an annual primary school tournament on behalf of the club and we provide the medals along with. Oh, Joe, you're frozen or is it me? Have we, have we, have we lost Joe for a minute? That was, yeah, I think I think what Joe was saying there was fantastic. And I know part of the um, aims of the Football Association in terms of that funding for football was to encourage um, people to get to get more people to get involved in football, particularly women and girls. And we've seen across the borough where we've invested in facilities that um, more people have actually got involved and participated. So I'm sorry, Joe, I don't know what happened there. It's one of the uh, wonders of having online meetings. We all suddenly disappear mid-flow, um, but perhaps he can come back later. So George, any any ideas um, for, from you? Well, thank you, Louise. Yes, uh, I think Joe and um, John just said, said a lot of what I wanted to say, but uh, Roncorn has a sort of unusual approach to uh, recruitment and participation uh, in as much that um, although rowing uh, generally people come to it from um, university or school, uh, here the majority of our people have actually come in because we've attracted juniors, young people to come along and their parents come along and we're very strong in encouraging the parents to participate, maybe just holding a boat or helping with the coaching, we need two people in the launch to coach. And I would think something upwards of about a third of our members have actually come in because their children have come in. And that works very well because it's the parents who pay the, the money after all. They pay a full fee. Juniors don't have to. 
uh, but also they enjoy it. And we offer facilities both for the competitive rower, uh, and last year some of our veterans who not rowed 10 years ago were winning medals at uh, international competitions, uh, and, and for the recreational rower with broader boats. Now, underlying that is a huge problem for us. They'll come along and they'll want to participate. I mean, who, what could be better than drifting up a river in the summer? Uh, but they'll look at our changing facilities and they'll think, well, hang on, these aren't suitable. And they're not. Uh, talking to Helsby School and the OBA academies in Runcorn, they're not um, particularly keen to come down and put their kids through our changing rooms. They're not good enough. So we have to enhance those. Uh, secondly, we also have, um, believe it or not, although this doesn't help with the river, we have indoor rowing. And of course, we can provide lots of facilities and coaching on the indoor rowing machines. Uh, I have to say that um, I'm not a great fan of them, although I do compete on them. But a lot of people find them really fun. And indeed, there are things like the, the World Indoor Rowing Championships. And we're encouraging our memberships to take part in those even the, next week. And that'll be done entirely online. So we encourage participation. But certainly with the facilities we've got, that's a major uh, inhibitor. And our membership growth, our membership comes from predominantly juniors coming in, then their parents coming in, and their parents staying, and the juniors going off to university or wherever they go. I would just perhaps add a bit to that in that the um, the women's squad is actually the largest squad in the in the club at the moment, um, and we also um, found over the summer that there's been a lot of um, stand up paddle boards come down, so. There's quite a lot of traffic on the on the, the water at the moment. And again, I think with decent facilities, then it would certainly attract people who are going to go out and get cold in all weathers to then be able to get come inside, get a warm drink, and uh, changing facilities is just absolutely paramount. That's thanks, um, Sue, for that. And um, thank you all for, for contributing to that. Someone's um, put a question in the chat about how, um, you know, if we've got all these 3G facilities, how can we sort of coordinate and work together? And I think now is part, that, that's part of why we're here tonight, is looking at how we can work together and cooperate um, as, as we move forward. Um, and there's some really interesting comments that are being um, made in the chat. And can I just say at this stage we have not we have not got a preformed idea about what um, any new facilities may or may not look like in in Frodsham, and that's why we want to work with you really closely um, to try and understand what what the community needs. Um, and it's as I said before, it's great to see you all here tonight, but it is the start of that conversation, um, and it's it's fantastic to hear what the community can do when they sort of set the mind to it. Um, so thanks to Alan, George, Sue who popped in, and Joe who think we might have lost him again. Um, so, no, I'm still here, uh, Louise. I'm still I'm still listening. All right. Did you want to add anything else before you um, you got cut off? Was there anything yeah, else you wanted to add? No, just just that we have been working with Joe Ellis, who's running the 3G at Helsby Sports Club in terms of uh, capacity. So we are already having productive conversations with Joe about use and sharing and not cannibalising each other. That's that won't happen. That the the demand is there, so that's not a problem. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point. We do need to work together, and it's not because they are such fantastic community facilities. It's not a competition to sort of of uh, outdo each other. Um, and I'm really sort of, uh, it's good to hear those stories and, and your aspirations really as you move forward for the area. Uh, I know um, we looked at a water sports centre at some stage in um, Chester, but we we struggled over planning issues. And I heard some fantastic stories from some of the rowing clubs in London and the work they'd done with sort of disadvantaged youngsters and um, getting them involved in rowing um, and I think subsequently Bri we did some work around with some of the schools with uh, pretend rowing you don't actually have to get in the, in the water and do it so that's, that's on the rowing machines I think you'll find Louise that's it yes indeed you, you, you've lost your opportunity to compete in the world rowing indoor championships I'm afraid but Sue <laughs> can tell you all about that very good um OK, so we, we're getting some really um, good um, comments and suggestions, uh, people who want to get involved. Um, and I think that's that's really good. I'm just having a quick look through to see if there's anything we can um, change uh, or answer. 
uh, somebody has put something here about libra the library facilities. Um, I think, you know, we've got a fantastic, fantastic library in Frodsham. It's one of our best performing libraries. Our library service is outstanding. It's an award winner, national award winner. Um, and we don't want to lose that in Frodsham. That's that's really, really important um, to, you know, to make sure that uh, the library facilities um, continue. Um, you know, they've moved from traditional just dealing with um, books to all fantastic community events and community activities. And I'm sure a lot of you have, have seen the work they've done during the lockdown um, over the last year and keeping that library service um, going. So, um, you know, somebody wants, wants to talk about libraries and I'm glad you are because that's that's really, really important for all of us. Um, OK, so. Uh, yeah, there's a comment about retain a town centre facility, affordable prices, all of those are really important. OK, so there's lots of really good ideas and suggestions. Um, I think what 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 you need to think about now is who's got the time and commitment to work with us on that project group as we go forward. And in terms of the timeline for that, the idea is that we get some names. Um, so we're not going to say you have to let us know by tomorrow, but maybe by the end of the week, if you want to get involved in that group. Um, or if you know somebody who couldn't attend tonight who might be interested in getting involved. And then we're going to set um, the first meeting up in the next uh, few weeks. And then we'll once we've got that group together, we can then decide what we need to do to move forward. And it might be tasking officers to go away and find out things or having further discussions or whatever it is. Um, and then we'll meet on a regular basis until we're hoping sort of July time we'll get something drafted with a view to taking it um, back to uh, to cabinet in sort of September time. And it might be useful that we come back together as this group as well, so that whoever's on that small working group can actually come back and feedback and update um, with with how how it's going. That could be something we do um, in a you know in a couple of months' time or something. Um, so one as I talked before, it's not just about the building, and it's about how we get people involved in activities. And I know people have put. Um, in the chat, if you make the facilities, people will come, but not everybody will. So we need to think about how we can encourage um, people who may not have participated in physical activity before. How can we get them to come and um, take part in our wonderful um, uh, uh, facilities that we've already got, to be honest? Um, so that would be something that um, we'd like to um, explore as well, it, broadening participation and getting everyone fit and healthy. Um, so I have got, um, we've got the local ward councillor here tonight, councillor Riley, and I'm really pleased that we've got our MP as well, Mike Ainsbury. Oh, has somebody gone off, someone gone off mute, can you all put yourselves, I think there's some unmuted people. So I'm going to ask uh, Councillor Riley, do you want to come in and um, I'm sure you'll want to play an active role, um, but I just wanted if you wanted to add any comments or say anything. Uh, thank you, uh, Louise. I, I most certainly would uh, like to just uh, say, say a few words, if I may. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. we can. Right. OK, I think I think what has been demonstrated tonight and, um, you know, it's great to see 40 odd people on this chat, but I'm pretty sure everybody on this chat would know that there's probably two or three or maybe even more people who would be interested in being on this chat, because what you've seen tonight is just a little snapshot of the power of local communities to solve problems and find solutions. Uh, I think, you know, the examples that you brought in tonight has demonstrated to um, everybody, all of us, you know, what communities can do when local people organise themselves, because uh, it's, uh, you know, ultimately us that live here who have the heart to step in and fill these gaps that unfortunately uh, you and I have, have 
traded this question over many, many years now. Uh, you know, the community has stepped in because, unfortunately, Cheshire West was um, prioritising elsewhere. So I think, um, you know, I'll put a little challenge back to you, Louise, here, because uh, although the hub and spoke model that has been um, adopted by Cheshire West, I think is a is a great model and will probably work in um, parts of the borough, um, uh, you know, other, other places. I'm not totally convinced that your version of the hub and spoke is going to be the best one for us round here. Because when you were talking to um, you know, the people that are already mobilising, they are already mini hubs in their own right. And you've, you've heard tonight what they are going to do in terms of some of those spoke activities, in terms of what more could they do? How will they take their projects to the next level? What, what level of scope and ambition they've got? And so I think the challenge that I would want to uh, bring through the working group in a very constructive way, of course, is, is to see how we can build on the immense community capacity that exists here. So that, you know, the limited amount of funding, we all know that finances are challenging. Uh, the limited amount of funding can go as far as it possibly can do, but in the right hands to be able to get the biggest bang for the book that's available. And I think, you know, when you've when you've heard about some of the activities that are currently taking place and there's a lot of people not here tonight who could, um, you know, be equally as inspiring. You know, there's a there's a huge amount that can be done. But unfortunately, Frodham, um, you know, right now does not have a hub that is suitable for the whole range of activities that need to, to, to take place and be a home for all those great community groups. So we're all going to need to think quite creatively about the space that we've got available and some of the solutions that are there and have been there for a long time. And if now is the moment, let's all get behind that and really power forward, um, you know, for a solution, um, not in another five or 10 years, but, you know, in the shortest possible order, because COVID really has shown us the importance of, you know, communities being coming together and what physical activity and community connectivity can do to keep us all happy, healthy, social, socially and otherwise. So, um, um, you know, uh, less, less, little less talk, a little more action. And I promise not to sing. OK, well, that's thank you very much. Oh, gosh, thank you very much, Councillor Riley. And that's why we're here tonight, because um, this is action. So we're, that's why we've got short meetings so that we can start to really focus um, and move forward for this. So um, Council, uh, Councillor Amesbury, sorry, <laughs> Mike, would you like to come in and just uh, say a few words? Yes, th th thank you, Louise, and everybody that's attended. And, and a big thank you to Alan and Joe and George and Sue for all you do and your presentations. They were they, they, they were really helpful useful and constructive but well, i've had a considerable number of constituents write to me that happen to be some of them happen to be neighbors and of course friends and service users and i count count myself as one of them um, i declare an interest with frodsham junior football club and I, my, my young son plays for that and they do a brilliant a brilliant job um, and also use in normal times i look forward to getting back to, 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 to that, uh, Frodsham Leisure Centre. And, and, and what my constituents very importantly um, um, are saying to me is that they don't want to see any disinvestment in Frodsham. They want first class leisure and community facilities. And that includes obviously mentioned the, the library, gym facilities. I know there's some call for a, a swimming pool as, as, as well. Now this is the, the start of that, that journey, but the community needs reassurance. I've been crystal clear, actually, no to disinvestment. Actually, if there's any form of closure, there's got to be a, a new first class um, facility. Um, um, and that's got to be got to be the bottom line. I don't hold my punches and challenges. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge. I'll challenge myself here because um, I, I know there's some people who represent the area a considerable number of, of, of years. I work together with everybody. 
it's not carping from the sidelines, regardless of the political party, political composition, and everything. It's about putting fraudulent first day um, um, and doing our best. So I will do my bit. And I can use my influence in terms of Parliament. We'd like to support England and the rest of it and be directed to people. But you know, we've got to ensure that we're successful um, in getting first class leisure and community facilities here that complement some of the brilliant work that is happening, whether it be Runcorn, um, Rowing Club, whether it be um, uh, Helsby Sports and Social, and whether it be Frotsham Juniors and many more stakeholders. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Mike, and thanks for your offer to influence people. We might we might come back to you with that one. I think that's that's really we need to make friends and influence people in high places. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, and thank you, Councillor Riley, and look forward to working with you over the next uh, few months. OK, so um, we are going to put an email address up, I think, now um, for you if you're interested in the project group and getting involved where we, you won't be on mute and you won't have your um, faces turned off. It will be a proper discussion, um, but we just felt tonight because so many people were coming, it was best just to to have it as it is. Um, so we've, oh, we've put by the 1st of March. You're very generous. I was going to say by Friday, but that's fine. <laughs> Um, obviously, um, get get your um, names submitted. If you know anybody else that you think would like to get involved, um, and even if you don't want to get involved, please use that email address with ideas and suggestions. So, you know, if you don't want to commit yourself to um, the project group, then please use use that email address to to put forward any um, ideas or suggestions going forward and so what we, we're going to be doing is this has been recorded so we're going to um, put it um, where it I, I'm guessing it's going to go either on the Brio website or our own um, with all the um, answers to all the questions and comments that you've made and we'll certainly um, contact you all um, who've attended tonight so that you can um, circulate them to your contacts as well. I think that would be um, a really good idea. So um, we are we are finished a bit early, which is good. You can go and get your tea now. Um, if you want to write anything else in the chat, please do it. It'll, it'll still be there when we've closed the meeting. So you'll still have an opportunity um, to put something in. Um, so Councillor Riley's put, please check the email as it's just bounced back on the Quack email system. Uh, OK, so we need to double check that. I don't know if anyone can check it very quickly while we're just on. Undelivered. Cheshire West and Chester.gov.uk. So can we um, double check that everybody, um, the team, the tech team, we've got Lewis Tucker on the line, who is a techie. I don't know how we can check it in, in real time. Uh, yeah, Amanda's going to check it. Um, so what we will do is circulate um, that, that email address. Oh, and Lewis is going to check it as well. Yeah, I'm just seeing what uh, Brio Future. Ah, it's Brio Future Offer. Count Council Riley, not um, Brio Futures. Brio Future Offer. So that's that should work. Um, Oh, Pam, so you've held your ha hand up there. <laughs> Apologies. So it's this this one does work. Brio Future Offer at Cheshire West and Chester.gov.uk. OK, so that is the correct one. Fantastic. So get your emails, get your names in. Um, put your names forward. 
to say that you want to get involved um, and I, I'm going to be chairing the meeting as we go forward so look forward to meeting you all and a massive thank you for attending here today and next time we'll be able to chat to each other which will be much better um, than the format um, tonight where we've had to manage it because of the numbers attending so uh, lovely to see you all and uh, hopefully um, see you very shortly. Okay, good night.